The President, please Le président, be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Le Président, the court is now in session. Nous reprenons l'audience. Says the President. The graphics, please verify the attendance of the parties to the proceedings. The graphics, Mr. President, uh, the parties to the proceedings today are all present. The President is the expert, Mr. Nayan Chanda, is available and, uh, uh, to testify during the first two days. The graphier, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Nan Nayan Chanda is available at uh, the waiting room now. So, the president, uh, the lawyer, I note uh, your present. Uh, what would you like uh, to make? Mr. President, Mr. President, your honors, hello. Uh, May I uh, make a very uh, quick re request on behalf of the civil parties? The President, uh, Mr. Alain Wenger, you take Mr. the floor. Mr. Je vous en prie. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Um, Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, juste Mr. President, une President, demande de, de confirmation. One, uh, Nous aimerions pouvoir for, informer uh, de façon claire, nette et précise like cette semaine nos partis civils sur l'agenda. Nos partis, les partis civils qui, de façon remarquable, sont là jour après jour en audience. Il y a également d'autres partis civils qui, nous l'espérons, vont venir mercredi et jeudi des provinces pour assister à euh, aux audiences. Uh, Pouvez-vous simplement in these hearings? Uh, pour so nous confirmer le fait qu'après avoir entendu l'expert sur le conflit armé aujourd'hui et peut-être demain, nous entendons ensuite revenir à la mise en œuvre de la politique du PCK uh, S21 pour finir les questions de parti à l'expert uh, et le cas échéant également commencer les questions à l'accusé et non pas continuer uh, sur le conflit armé. Uh, nous serions au gré de cette confirmation.
The President, uh, the trial chamber would like to inform to Mr. Alain Wenner and uh, the parties to the proceedings that due to the special circumstance uh, in which uh, Mr. Nayan Chanda, who has not uh, got the opportunity to provide uh, testimony other than the, the 25th and 26th of May because he has another commitment in his uh, teaching in Hong Kong. So there has been a change in the schedule uh, to testify his testimony regarding the facts on the armed conflict. And this is a special circumstance uh, in which uh, the party has already been informed. Regarding the witness, uh, the expert witness, Mr. Craig Atchison's testimony, uh, he is going to be called again after the mm -hmm. chamber mm -hmm. has heard uh, the armed uh, conflict uh, fact uh, testified uh, by Mr. Nayan Chanda. And uh, we have had, uh, we haven't had any uh, times to uh, put uh, questions to the accused uh, concerning the uh, facts on the poser des questions implementation of the CK, uh, CPK policy yet, uh, de la mise so en de we la will do that at a later date. Ce que nous ferons ultérieurement. The court officials are now instructed uh, to bring in nous Mr. Nayan Chanda into the courtroom, please. De introduire Monsieur Nayan Chanda dans le prétoire. The president. the president, is your name Nayan Chanda? Vous appelez bien Monsieur Nayan Chanda? Nayan Chanda? Nay Chanda, Nay Chanda, look me. How old are you this year? Oui, quel âge avez-vous cette année? Question: What is your nationality? Le Indian. Suis. Quelle est votre nationalité? Je suis Indien. La réponse. Question. Question. Where is your current residence? Connecticut in Vous the United States. Je suis résident aux États-Unis. Réponse de Monsieur Nayan Chanda. Question. Question. What is your occupation? Quelle est votre profession? I'm director of publications je suis at the Yale Center for the Study of Globalization. Centre d'études uh, pour la mondialisation. Question. Based on the Graffier's report, you are not related to any of the parties in this case. Is this correct? Aucune no, des parties s'est présente. Réponse oui, en effet. Question. Based on the rule 30.2 of the ECCC internal rules, Mr. Nayan Chanda, you are called as an expert. You are required to take an oath before your testimony. Do you agree to this? Vous devez prêter serment. Oui, Président. International Graphier, Mathieu. 
Can you arrange the swearing procedure? A procéder à la Please repeat after me. Um, I solemnly declare that I will assist the chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. I solemnly declare that I will assist the chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. Honnêtement, en toute confidentialité et au mieux de ma compétence. President, Hello. you have taken an oath already, and the Chamber would like to ask you some questions as an expert. First, vous poser un certain nombre de questions à vous en tant qu'expert. You have spent almost 30 years as a correspondent and editor for the Far Eastern Economic Review, and during that period, you made several reports regarding the Far East, the South East, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your can I see endowment for international peace? Du, um, and from 90 to 92, you were the peace publisher of the AG Wall Street Journal Weekly. Is this correct? Pour le Asian Wall Street Journal Weekly and the Far Eastern Economic Review. Is that exact? Réponse, oui, en effet. I now you are the editor-in-chief editor of the research institution at the Yale University. Is that correct? Yes. Réponse, oui. Le Président. Did you write about the security policy and security of the Southeast Asia, amongst your publications, you are also the publisher of the book entitled Brother Enemy, The War of the War. Is this correct? Du livre Brother Enemy, Les Frères Ennemis, The War After the War. Est-ce exact? Réponse oui, en effet, Monsieur le Président. Le Président. Judges of the bench, do you have questions to put forward to this expert witness? If you have, the floor is yours. Judge Carwright, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chanda, the court is grateful uh, to you for your attendance to give testimony as an expert. Uh, as you have already said, you are the author of the book, Brother Enemy, The War After the War, which is found on the case file at English 001-92169-00001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-0001-92-
references in English only. If you want the other languages, please say so. This is just a way of saving a little time. Now, Mr. Chanda, uh, Brother Enemy was written by you and published in 1986. Is that correct? L'ouvrage intitulé Brother Enemy. Est-ce exact? Oui, en effet. Was it intended to be, as the subtitle suggests, a history of Indochina since the fall of Saigon? Yes. Does it therefore cover? But man, hi. Does it therefore cover more than the Khmer Rouge period in Cambodia, extending also to Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, and China's foreign policies and conflicts during the period your book covers? Yes, and also... Réponse oui. The state's policy towards the region. Également, le livre couvre la politique des États-Unis vis-à-vis de la région. In writing your book, Madame did you draw Carrette, on your experience as correspondent, livre, tiré, editor, and editor at large for the Far Eastern Economic de, Review? Uh, yes, I did. Far Eastern uh, Economic Review. Réponse, oui, Madame la juge. In your professional Question. capacity, votre what opportunity did you have to observe the development of the conflict between Cambodia and Vietnam in the mid to late 1970s? The Indochina correspondent of the Far Eastern Economic Review, I had uh, the occasion to travel to eu, Vietnam, de cette période, Laos, la possibilité and de Cambodia, me rendre of course, uh, au Vietnam, au Laos uh, et au Khmer uh, Cambodge, mais pas pendant la période I had du régime Khmer Rouge. Depuis cette époque, uh, interviews j'ai eu de nombreuses interviews avec uh, many countries, des responsables de nombreux pays, China, y compris des pays China, de Indonesia. la péninsule indochinoise et uh, des interviews avec des responsables chinois. Thank you. Je vous remercie, uh, and in fact, Carpenter. I believe you conducted one-on-one -on -one interviews with key people from des, um, Democratic Kampuchea and um, from Vietnam face face during or after the period that you are concerned with in your book. Yes. Yes. Can you give me a selection of names of the uh, most critical people from the period uh, uh, of democratic Kampuchea in Cambodia or from Cambodia or from Vietnam? Um, uh, Democratic Kampuchea, I had interviewed uh, um, Vice Premier Yen Sari. Uh, um, during the period he was in power and also afterwards, uh, I had interviewed Secretary uh, Minister Phan Mandong of Vietnam, Phan Mandong Foreign Minister Nguyen Thuc, uh, and Kutak, several other senior officials. Uh, Thank you. Did you have Question. any opportunity to uh, interview the um, uh, Sihanouk or Pol Pot or Kyo Sampan? I had interviewed um, Prince Sihanouk uh, many times, but not during the period of the Khmer Rouge. And I had not Et interviewed in Brother Enemy, you record efforts made by Democratic Kampuchea to secure territory uh, within weeks of their uh, uh, assumption of control of the country. 
la suite de la prise de contrôle is du pays the English um, references 00192196 dans votre livre In that reference you say dans cette within weeks livre, of the capture of Phnom Penh Khmer Rouge units had fanned out to secure their land and sea border. Troops were dispatched to the Gulf of Thailand to take control of the islands that the old regime controlled or claimed. Do you recall that reference in your book? Est-ce que vous vous rappelez avoir écrit cela dans votre ouvrage? By your use of the terms. Khmer Rouge units and troops. Do I understand you to say that these were armed actions by the democratic Kampuchea military? Thank you. Do you recall any instances of fighting over offshore islands? For example, the Mayaguez incident of the 12th of May 1975. Yes, I recall that that was the period when the Khmer Rouge units had attacked the two major Vietnamese islands. And eventually, the Vietnamese um, counterattacked and removed the Khmer Rouge presence from these islands. And in your book at 00192195, you say angry young Khmer Rouge soldiers who had board, boarded the Mayaguez with only their AK-47 assault rifles had actually been trying to assert their newly gained control along the edges of the country's territorial waters. That is still your assessment of the situation? Yes, Your Honor. Do you recall attacks uh, on Puolo Y? Can you comment on that? Yes, uh, Polo Y is in a Cambodian island, but the Vietnamese in their tribe to throw the Khmer out from the islands they uh, control, they also proceeded to Polo Y and control it for a few months before they returned to the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, in uh, approximately June of, um, nine, uh, of 1975, is that your recollection? Yes. <coughs> and you have a reference to that at uh, 00192199. I'm going to ask you some questions now about civilians caught up Concernant in various disputes during the Khmer Rouge regime. De ces luttes sous le régime in le régime Brother Khmer Enemy, Rouge, in some le, detail, ennemi, you set out uh, accounts of various armed actions les, uh, undertaken by Democratic Kampuchea particularly during 1977. Do you know the incidents to which I am referring? Yes, I think this was the incident in March of 1978. Well, let's start with the exclusion of Vietnamese citizens from Cambodia, to which you refer at 00. 1922201 Can I just interpose at this stage do you have a copy of your book with you Yes well in that case the easier reference for you is uh, page 16 of the English version Thank you
At that page, you describe Madame, uh, the uh, uh, um, exclusion uh, of Vietnamese citizens uh, from Cambodia uh, and they're being forced into the Mekong Delta area of South Vietnam. Do you recall that incident, and is there anything you would like to add to that, uh, perhaps giving indications of numbers and the composition of that uh, population? I have um, visited some of the camps where these uh, people were lodged and it's my recollection that they are all uh, Cambodians. And, um, but the, in a previous period, in 75-76 period, there were Vietnamese who were resident of Cambodia also had fled to Vietnam. <coughs> In your book at that page, however, you describe them as thousands of Vietnamese men, women, and children having been driven out of Cambodia. Are you saying that, in fact, they were Cambodian people, or were they Cambodian people with Vietnamese connections, or what is your assessment of the makeup of that population? I think uh, the if you are looking at the same page, page 16, I have said that several hundred Cambodian refugees of Vietnamese and Chinese origin managed to install themselves in a pagoda in Cholon. And um, then I said that first five months after the liberation of Phnom Penh, more than 150,000 destitute Vietnamese had flooded into the Vietnamese provinces. So it was, it was not that I saw them, this is, I was told that these were the Vietnamese people. And then, uh, in your book, uh, for your reference at page 87, ERN reference 00192272, uh, you talk of uh, Khmer Rouge attacks on a string of villages in the Mekong Delta, and that was on the night of the 30th of April, 1977. Do you recall that particular incident? You said page 87? Yes, page 87. At the top part of the page, since March in preparation for armed conflict. Yes, uh, this was an attack I came to know about much later because these attacks Vietnamese did not report at all when they happened in April 77 and even September 77. Um, so the account I have is um, from sources found after the event. And uh, in this account in you, your book, Question. you Et mention the attack on Tin Bien Township, uh, which alone had caused du, uh, about 100 de civilian deaths. Avec un, un nombre de uh, victimes important. Est-ce que c'est -ce est, est same, same reference, same part de of the page. Ici, même partie de la page. 
You say on the night of 30th of April, Khmer Rouge had mounted attacks. Do you recall that uh, this is the incident to which you refer and which you received further information about much later? Yes. Um, it, it this was the uh, incident in 1978 when I went oui, to that area and witnessed uh, scores of dead bodies and sign of attack which had happened. Des, uh, and day uh, after day. De cadavres et des signes and de uh, la this tarte. particular township is inside Question. Vietnamese territory, is it not? Yes, it is. 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 At uh, ERN 00192371, which is page 186 for you, you say that these attacks the elimination of ethnic Vietnamese began in April, began in April culminated in large-scale Khmer Rouge attacks mm. on the Vietnamese border. Is that correct? It was l'objet d'un nombre grandissant d'attaques Khmer Rouge le long de la frontière. Is that exact? It's towards the bottom of that page. Vers mm -hmm. la fin de cette page, 186. So 186, is it? Uh, yes, 186. Last paragraph. Security problems, too, began to preoccupy Vietnam. That was the paragraph that it starts. Its relations with Cambodia had worsened steadily since the beginning of 1977. Uh, the elimination of ethnic Vietnamese in Cambodia and purge of suspected pro-Hanoi elements begun in April had culminated in large-scale Khmer Rouge attacks on the Vietnamese border. You recall that those, in, those series of incidents that gave rise to that uh, conclusion on your part? Yes, I do. And this, in fact, um, refers to the attack on April 30th and, and previous attacks. And basically, what I recall was that in 19... In 1977, uh, in May, the Vietnamese, um, the Khmer Rouge had decided that they have to carry on attacks inside Vietnam in a, in a sort of defensive maneuver. Uh, and, and that was, uh, according to the scholar Steve Heder I spoke, he learned that on May 30th, the, the, sorry, in May 1977, the Eastern Zone planned to attack Vietnam, and uh, Mr. Hun Sen, who was then a member of the Khmer Rouge, was put in charge of the plan. But he told Steve Heder that, that he would not do it, and he took refuge in the jungle on June 20th, 1977. So this is the period when which this series of uh, attacks were mounted against Vietnam. Thank you. Merci, Now, in June of 1977, there were, in fact, peace overtures by Vietnam. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, the reference 
in your book is for you at page 91, and the ERN number is 00192276. But in fact, at the next page, Democratic Kampuchea replied that talks could resume only after a period of time. Do you recall that? That's on the next page, last paragraph page before suivante. Peking bears its Le teeth. Dernier paragraph avant euh, Pékin montre les dents. Montre ses crocs. Yes, I do recall it. Oui, je And, um, me souviens de I cela. think this was taken from some official document, that information. And um, it was at this time that Democratic Kampuchea, for the first time, gave a hint of uh, its disputes with Vietnam uh, by praising the soldiers and combatants in Kampot province, which bordered Vietnam. That is correct. Can you tell me if, to your knowledge, any such peace talks as proposed by Vietnam took place at this stage? Again, um, I have to apologize for my memory not being as sharp. These things happened some 35 years ago. I, I do recall that there were some meetings uh, between Vietnamese officials and the Khmer officials in both in Hanoi and in Phnom Penh, different period, not necessarily in this time frame, and, um, and nothing came of it. Thank you. You then write of an incident or series of incidents which occurred in September 1977 uh, at page 193 for you, uh, Mr. Chanda, and 00192378. And you recount the experiences of an Hungarian journalist's uh, description of a massacre at a village in Tay Ninh province. Do you recall this particular? Yes, I do recall it very well. In fact, I had uh, spoken to this Hungarian journalist, and um, he had given me the, all the details which I uh, have used in, the, in this chapter 7 of the book. Can you tell us where Tainin province is? Tainin province is to the west of Saigon, bordering Cambodia. Thank you. And later, in March of 1978, in fact, you personally visited Tainan City, uh, and in your book, Brother Enemy, you record your experiences at 00192407. Which is for you, page two two zero. So, this was some months after the incident described to you had taken place. Is that correct? Yes. Can you, from 35 years on, give a, a brief summary of your experiences uh, from your own first-hand knowledge? Um, the, the village that I visited uh, looked uh, like it has been hit by a storm. It was uh, houses were destroyed, a lot of debris still lying around, and, um, and people are still trying to build new homes in the same spot. And I met some of the survivors. Um, who had told me about what happened. And um, it was um, it was 
and I must say I was um, Je dois dire um, shaken by the accounts of the atrocities um, leur relation, leur relation that were committed during this attack that um, I have never heard of such brutalities perpetrated by men women, children, innocent people. Concernant, s'attaquant à des femmes et des enfants. Et à la page 223 et 0019240408, vous évoquez une scène épouvantable où l'on voit des cadavres non enterrés, des hommes, des femmes et des enfants qui sont des cadavres. Visit which is absolutely engraved in my memory. I have a personal nightmare from those visits. I have never seen in my reporting career as many bodies of civilians killed most brutally and left there. And The kind of mildness of this attack was most astonishing. That I wondered what these people had done to merit that kind of death. But what did these people have to do to merit a death so atrocious? An indication of this, perhaps, the reason for the attack was on a mad hut that was destroyed. The perpetrators had lost their minds. Perhaps, the reason for the attack was on a mad hut that was destroyed. The perpetrators had lost their minds. Perhaps, the reason for je me souviens d'une hutte empisée scribbled in charcoal et some Khmer words. Il y avait des mots en Khmer qui avaient été débouillés au charbon sur, son, sur le mur. And I asked an interpreter to read it to me, and he said, "It says this is our land." And that perhaps is the only explanation I could get for this kind of attack. Il était écrit là, cette terre est à nous. Et c'est la explanation la seule explication plausible qui pouvait expliquer donc. Now I note from the account in your book that you were escorted to the site or facilitated to visit the site by your Vietnamese hosts. Is that correct? Yes. And you note in your book that you might that you were skeptical as to their motives. Is that correct? Yes. Apart from the slogan written in charcoal, did you have any uh, other indication from your uh, interviews with people in the village as to who had perpetrated this, uh, these killings? Um, there were uh, Cambodians who, who came And, uh, and they basically said in Khmer, the Sao shouted, John, John, which Khmer means enter. And the people who lived there, they were Vietnamese, but I think um, living in proximity of Cambodia, they understood Khmer. And so this account is from the um, survivors as to the identity of the attackers. And in fact, you interviewed a young couple whom you mentioned at page 224-00192409, and they told you of the shots of Chon Chon. Yes. They also told you what they saw from their hiding place. Is that correct? Now, is it correct that a few days later you were summoned by your Vietnamese hosts and transported by air with many other members of the media to a town called Ha Tien, which had formerly had about 3,000 people in it? Is that correct? Yeah, I think the um, sequence was like this. Uh, I visited this village that we discussed right now on the same trip. This was 
à l'occasion du même voyage. C'était le matin du même déplacement. Il y avait d'autres journalistes étrangers. On nous a emmenés à bord d'un hélicoptère de l'armée vietnamienne jusqu'à cet endroit donc, où, où j'ai vu euh, les traces so de ce massacre. Alors, le premier village que nous avons juste discuté est un village qui 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 est c'est bien cela C'est la page 221 de votre livre. Middle of the page. Milieu de la page. Sentence starting the mm -hmm. suspicion. Yeah. La phrase qui commence par le Yes, this is an village. So, in the same uh, trip, Donc, you were also taken to Ha Tien, is that correct? Yes. Aussi emmené, uh, And um, this is, correct, is in, in fact témoin. the village uh, where you saw the harrowing sights that we've already described. Yes. Vous avez été témoin de la scène Now, the people that you saw awaiting burial, were they members uh, of the military? No, they are, um, they are civilians uh, from the village survivors. Uh, in fact, we, our helicopter landed in... Um, Um, we were taken to Hatian Airport, and from there we traveled to Anpu. So, um, and on the way, of course, to the village, we saw people um, digging graves, and these were civilians. Nous avons vu des gens qui étaient en train de creuser des fosses, et c'était des civils. Thank you. Merci, dit la juge I now want to move Maintenant, to your account of a major attack on Cambodian territory by Vietnam. Uh, in your book, you refer to the first, what you describe as the first major attack on democratic Kampuchea by the Vietnamese army in October 1977. This account is found at 00192381 and for you, page 196. Do you um, recall writing about this major avez, attack? Avez-vous le souvenir d'avoir euh, écrit à ce sujet, au sujet de cette euh, importante attaque? Second paragraph on that page. En fait, c'est le deuxième paragraphe de la page 196. Yes, I, le I, témoin, I, oui. I did this. Read this chapter, yes. Oui, oui, non, Et puis And uh, in that account, you describe it as an un unpublicized military operation against Cambodia in October 1977. That the Viet Vietnamese drove armored columns up to 15 miles into uh, the Cambodian province of Sveirien. À l'intérieur de la province cambodgienne uh, and, de Sveirien. Uh, in fact, that was a feigned, a pretend fait, attack. Is that your recollection? Yes, and that was what I was told by my ensuite, sources who were familiar with the military operation, that this was designed to oui, basically draw the Khmer Rouge out quoi, so that they could be then attacked. And that, in fact, happened. Yes. Uh, but you record that losses suffered by the Khmer Rouge uh, were not great and did not seem to stop them one bit. Is that correct? Yes. In fact, that is evidenced by the attacks that followed. Oui, dit le témoin, comme cela est prouvé par les attaques subséquentes. 
And there were, of course, other attacks by the Vietnamese infantry, uh, which is described at uh, 0019239191 at page 206. Uh, and this, this is the uh, major attack made at the end of 1977 and going into 1978. Is that correct? Yes. And in your book, you describe it as a sizable force of Vietnamese infantry and artillery, including the elite 9th Infantry Division, launched a massive attack on Cambodia from half a dozen points along the border with two principal prongs heading towards the capital. Is that right? Yes. And uh, on the next page, you describe the shock felt by the leaders in Phnom Penh at the scale of this attack and at the rout of the, fo the Cambodian forces in the eastern zone. Is that right? Yeah, that is what I was given to understand. And you go on to say, but they, meaning the leaders uh, in Phnom Penh, were not ready to sue for peace as the Vietnamese had hoped. Yes. Right. So, by those statements, you are asking your readers to infer that the massive Vietnamese attack had been intended as a way of encouraging peace talks with democratic Kampuchea. Is that right? Yeah, that was um, the impression I got talking to the people in Hanoi, that um, they wanted, did not want a full-fledged war. And and they wanted une vraie to give this message Il to the Khmer Rouge that there is price to pay if they continue to carry on attacks on Vietnamese border than they have been doing. And this was uh, an attempt to dissuade them from continuing these attacks, but um, didn't seem to have any effect. Uh, and, of course, at this time, there were a lot of uh, communications between commanders in the field and the leaders in Phnom Penh, as you would expect. Did you ever cite any of the telegrams that um, have survived this period? Uh, I don't believe so. I'm, I'm just going to refer to one at this point, 00289797, uh, addressed uh, to beloved office 870 and describing the situation of what is described as the enemies at Route 22 battlefield. And the writer of the telegram says that the enemies have defeated us. They are moving vigorously from the east and along Route 22. We also got hit hard by our enemies from the west and along tr Route 22 to the east, and goes on to say that though we are fighting hard, we could no longer hold them back because they are attacking us strongly. The enemies used 50 tanks to attack us, we have managed to destroy three of those tanks. Now, the Khmer for that uh, telegram is 00021443, and there is no French translation. From your uh, inquiries and interviews, 
did you learn of any consequences for the Eastern Zone Democratic military as the result of their failure to repel the Vietnamese in December of 1977? Um, there have been um, significant amount of barges of uh, people living along the border because they were considered to be either sympathetic to the Vietnamese or collaborators. And uh, so there is uh, many reports of a huge um, barges taking place in Eastern Zone in that, uh, since the December 77 attack. And in fact, you describe this uh, to some degree at pages 213 and 214, ERN numbers 00192, 398, and 399. Is that so? Yes. C'est correct, dit le témoin. Thank you. I now want to turn Merci. to uh, prisoners Je of war. Des uh, de you are a journalist, Vous and I imagine that you were monitoring news reports between Vietnam and uh, Democratic Kampuchea, and indeed internationally during this period. Yes. Are you aware of any oui, broadcasts concerning Vietnamese prisoners of war? War emanating Vietnamien from Democratic Kampuchea? Um, I don't recall any specific um, broadcast, but um, there were, what I recall was that, that um, Radio Phnom Penh sometimes broadcast reports about their having got Vietnamese prisoners of war and their having confessed to certain things, but I have no clear memory as to when that was and what was said. And uh, what about international media reports concerning prisoner of war confessions? Do you uh, recall, for example, uh, a report in far, uh, any reports in Far Eastern relations? I, I don't recall. Well, uh, I'll ask you to comment if you can, uh, but there is one report from Far Eastern Relations, from the Swedish collection, there is no um, translation of it, 00010984, uh, referring to the confession of a captured Vietnamese ethnic minority soldier. Uh, captured after a Cambodian attack on Vietnamese forces. There are also uh, reports of broadcasts by Radio Phnom Penh uh, between the 19th of February and the 20th of February 1978, 00009837, uh, a confession of a captain, a Vietnamese captain, commanding the 9th Special Company of the Independent 3rd Regiment of Dong Tap Province and uh, of a Vietnamese sergeant uh, on the uh, confession of this Vietnamese sergeant broadcast the following day. You have no personal recollection of such broadcasts or um, media reports in the international media. Um, those days I used to read um, radio 
je transmission that was transcribed by the United States Information Service. Par and le service um, they used américain to transcribe the broadcast from Phnom Penh and Hanoi and all the stations. And I certainly have read um, those broadcasts Et and I must have seen some of those confessions of whatever was broadcast, but I have no memory of specific thing that you are mentioning. Uh, of course, I fully appreciate Merci. that it's a very Merci. long time ago oui, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to you for your efforts to Merci record. Beaucoup, en tout cas, de vous now, uh, were you aware at the time of efforts à made by the International Committee of the Red Cross to safeguard civilians or captured or wounded soldiers during the disputes at the end of 1970, disputes between Vietnam and Cambodia at the end of 1977 and the beginning of 1978? Um, no, I do not recall non, um, je pas any ICRC involvement. The only thing I recall of the UN or international involvement was, to some extent, UNHCR par contre, was par being le du, um, asked to help in providing for refugees in South Vietnam. There is um, at 00166143, English only, a copy of the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, annual report of 1978 in which uh, it is recorded that the ICRC offered on the 31st of December 1977 uh, to assist the civilian um, population affected by the conflict and of captured or wounded soldiers. Uh, and uh, it gave identical messages both to Democratic Kampuchea and to the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Uh, do you have any comment on that uh, summary? No, I am, I am, uh, since I am unaware of that particular thing, I cannot comment. And in the same report, uh, it notes that a response was received from uh, Vietnam, uh, but it received no reply uh, from Democratic Kampuchea, uh, although it had taken the additional uh, precaution of en delivering a copy of its message to the embassy CICR, of Democratic Kampuchea uh, in Peking. Une copie, uh, papier now, I want to turn to uh, parts in your book where you discuss uh, Democratic Kampuchean policy in relation to the disputes between the two countries. In fact, of course, you were publishing as uh, an editor and journalist during this time, uh, and um, there is an article in the Far East Economic Review dated 29 April 1977, with the headline, Cambodia Looks for Friends, which was written by you. That's uh, found in English only at 00006000. La cote en est 000, the date was April, uh, April the 29th, 1977. And so what was your question? Yes, uh, 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 question uh, 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 put to you a few questions arising out of this article. In this article, you report Yang Sari's dismissal of any intention on the part of Democratic Kampuchea 
au nom de la démocratique visant à a monolithic Indochina une péninsule indochinoise and monolithique you also refer, refer to et vous border disputes vous faites état between democratic Kampuchea and Vietnam is that le correct? Kampuchea démocratique yes. et le Vietnam est-ce que c'est exact la réponse oui mention a quote by Yang Sari il a uh, je vous quoted as saying to the ASEAN countries um, citant that dans les democratic pays, Kampucheans are not communists. Is Ce, that right? Une citation yes. selon laquelle les autres, les pays Further, les autres pays ne sont there is pas, reference pas in the article Par ailleurs, to vous faites disputes dans cet described as border incidents des des, with comme Thailand. Des conflits frontaliers Do you recall that la reference? Est-ce que vous avez yes, souvenance de cette référence? Réponse Were oui, en effet. border incidents, to your knowledge, à votre armed disputes? S'agissait-il de yes, conflits armés? Were. Réponse oui, c'était le cas. Yes, thank you. Now, uh, there is a, a report to which Le I juge. wish to refer in Je Far Eastern Relations. Uh, the report Far is dated the 15th of May 1978, and it refers to a broadcast made on the 10th of May 1978. The ERN reference is D60, Annex 260, English ERN, Khmer Four six eight eight and French zero zero two eight zero and uh, in that report which is uh, excerpts of a broadcast mm. on the national Contrôle defense situation from April 1977 to 1978, clashes on the western border were mentioned as causing little concern. But the rest of the report focuses primarily on the defense of the eastern border. Now, this seems to be quite a major policy statement from Democratic Kampuchea. Do you recall this broadcast or the information uh, arising from this broadcast? Des informations I do not uh, dont il fait uh, état dans recall cette, uh, specifically this broadcast, ou dans but ce uh, it had become increasingly clear that although the Democratic Kampuchea had border dispute with both its neighbors, uh, it was Vietnam, which was Vietnam. Mm. Our biggest concern Alors, the le Vietnam qui était In le this report, I'm going to read out or summarize some of the statements um, uh, made from this broadcast. The first is, the defense of the eastern border has been a matter of vigorous and strenuous battle because to the east, Cambodia shares a border with Vietnam. The Vietnamese want to take our territory and turn Cambodia into their satellite, making it part of Vietnam. It was for this reason 
C'est pour cette that during the past year, que, au cours de a number of serious and violent battles de batailles were fought against the Vietnamese. Ont été menées contre uh, bearing les in mind that that is a si statement um, from uh, Democratic Kampuchea, uh, does it accord with your understanding of the country's policy at that time? Que vous comprenez uh, yes, it de la politique does. de l'époque du pays. Oui, il s'agissait d'une question importante. Especially Rouge, les Cambodgiens, um, en particulier les Cambodgiens, s'inquiétaient énormément du désir expansionniste. Et c'était une motive, un motif qui les a amenés à s'opposer au Vietnam. Il s'agissait de relations spéciales. Votre question vous fait référence à le commentaire de Yann Sari s'agissant de l'intégration dans ce bloc monolithique. Yann Sari faisait en fait référence au concept vietnamien de relations spéciales entre les pays de la péninsule indochinoise et donc ces relations ont été forgées pendant la lutte anticoloniale et étaient un élément essentiel visant à maintenir la sécurité et le développement des trois pays. Totally disagreed with that approach. Les Khmer Rouges étaient complètement d'accord avec cette approche, car ils considéraient cette relation spéciale comme étant, euh, je dirais, une tentative dissuadée du Vietnam de prendre le pouvoir au Cambodge et de prendre le territoire Thank cambodgien. You. La juge, je vous remercie. The same report of the broadcast refers to continuous fighting from 17 April 1977 to 17 April 1978, involving small, medium, large-scale battles and a victory over the Vietnamese on 6 January 1978. Uh, does that accord uh, with your knowledge, uh, although it is a heavily summarized uh, account? Um, no, it doesn't. In fact, uh, what is true is that there was continuous Uh, skirmishes along the border, and in fact, uh, the Vietnamese had also started bombing and strafing inside Cambodia by using their air force. Uh, those were not reported in the media. I learned about them from intelligence sources, and neither did the Khmer Rouge acknowledge that they were facing this kind of attack from Vietnam. And the story about the great victory in January et donc, en janvier, jusqu'à la victoire, jusqu'à cette date de janvier 78. En Can tout cas, il y avait un peu de temps à ce cambodge de la Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Et aux Can you tell me at euh, what period that started? Est-ce que je peux vous demander à partir de quelle date cela a commencé? Le témoin. I, I can't find it right now, but I, my uh, memory is that this was happening in the um, in June, July uh, of 78. Thank you. So um, it, it was occurring after uh, diplomatic relations were broken off Après with Vietnam by Democratic Kampuchea. Thank you. Now, you said that you were skeptical about the uh, statement that 
quant à l'affirmation uh, selon laquelle le had had a victory over the Vietnamese on the 6th of January 1978 also records that 29,000 Vietnamese troops were killed or wounded as the result of this, uh, quote, victory, uh, and five divisions were smashed. Are you able to accept that account? I'm afraid not. I think um, the broadcasts réponse, non. of their um, victory against the Vietnamese forces leur supposé uh, were victoire, kind of, la supposée victoire des Cambodgiens sur um, les uh, not taken seriously by any Mais analyst un uh, who qui pas été knew about the state of play au, au sérieux, uh, between par the two armies. Les parties concerné ou euh, connaissant la nature de ce conflit. And in the same report la of the broadcast made on the 10th of May 1978, uh, there is an account of a second phase of a Vietnamese attack at the end of February 1978, which, according to the broadcast, resulted in the defeat of Vietnamese forces in March of 1978. Does this account accord with your knowledge of the situation? Um, I, I don't think so. I think in March 78, that was the time when I was in Vietnam and traveling along the border. That was the time when I went to this village where I saw the massacre. And unless the Khmer Rouge considered the killing of the civilians inside Vietnam as a great victory, I did not see anything suggesting that the Vietnamese had suffered any losses on the part of the army or the Khmer Rouge militaire conséquence des attaques Khmer Rouge sur cette partie de la frontière this report also contains a statement which is reflected in other places that one Cambodian soldier is equal to 30 uh, Vietnamese soldiers. Uh, are you able to comment on, uh, on the reasons for making that statement that Democratic Kampuchea might have had for making that statement uh, rather than on the accuracy of the statement? Um, from what I recall, that statement, I think it was on May 30th, uh, 1978 broadcast, if I recall correctly, the date. That um, broadcast came in the wake of the massive barges of alleged Vietnamese sympathizers and uh, supporters of Vietnam Eastern Zone. And the um, broadcast to me uh, was designed to boost morale of the Khmer Rouge comrades about the war that they were going into. Because I think uh, anybody who had seen the situation on the ground would have known how far superior the Vietnamese military were. And it must have caused um, some demoralization. And so this notion that one Cambodian can actually kill 30 Vietnamese and that equation that we will lose 2 million Cambodians and in the process we will kill all the Vietnamese. Um, it is not a rational statement, but this is a statement designed affirmation to exact, boost morale. Cette affirmation a pour but de remonter now, you le mentioned moral. another broadcast, je, which je obviously you, you did monitor. Um, the particular broadcast to which I am referring has no names uh, indicating who made or authorized the broadcast. From your research, are you able to say who might have done that? Are you asking me about this particular broadcast? Well, it's possible that the one to which you are referring is one and the same as 
this one, uh, it's quite an extensive report, but in general, a statement such as this, which contains uh, a great deal of uh, policy, um, uh, shall we say, propaganda and other material, who would have made or authorized the making of the broadcast? Do you, are you able to comment on that? Um, I'm afraid uh, I am not familiar with the internal organization of the Khmer Rouge as to how a particular broadcast was drafted and who authorized their Thank you. In Brother Enemy uh, at um, ERN 0011 Paris, um, and for you, dans votre livre, à la page. Page five, Cinq. you discuss the motivation for uh, democratic Kampuchea's armed struggle uh, with Vietnam. In a section which starts the fall of Saigon Vietnam, and Phnom Penh ici, vous was followed by bloody clashes between the vi victorious Vietnamese and Cambodian des, communists uh, over control of the islands in the Gulf of Thailand um, and so on. From that uh, Thailand, quotation, am I to spécial. infer that your view of democratic Kempuchia's motivation Uh, was as follows, that there was hereditary enmity between Cambodia and Vietnam. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. That uh, there was a fight for control of the islands in the Gulf of Thailand. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that there was action by, Viet uh, by democratic Kampuchea to prevent being, quote, swallowed by Vietnam. Que son territoire Is that ne correct? Soit yes. Avalé, en tout And par uh, le Vietnam. action, Réponse on the dit, other hand, by Vietnam, part, to prevent Vietnam, being dominated by democratic Kampuchea's backer, China. Is that right? Yes. So this is the conclusion that you have reached in your book as the result of your research. Uh, in relation to the uh, disputes between the two countries. S'agissant des yes. conflits entre les deux pays. Uh, Réponse to, uh, oui. Si vous me permettez de retourner, revenir um, un petit peu en arrière in dans some ways, the Geneva Conference of 1954, And since then, it has shrunk as its territory has been taken by its two neighbors, Thailand and Vietnam. And that historical fact has been a major um, concern of the Khmer nationalists of all hues. But the Khmer Rouge saw the, the, the Geneva Conference et la conférence, la conférence de Genève the partners of Vietnam, Laos and Cambodian parties, Vietnam, they were Laos. not given the due reward for their struggle. Vietnam pas été obtained the 
northern uh, Vietnam uh, and eventually uh, uh, South Vietnam. Vietnam et, uh, Lao, Peter Lao le, were given le, le control of Lao two provinces in Laos, whereas the Khmer revolutionaries were not given a seat at the table, and the only thing Vietnam did was to take some 2,000 Khmer cutters uh, to uh, north so that they can live in Hanoi and not be bothered by the government in the royal government of Cambodia. So the, this was seen as a Vietnamese design to ensure their control first in Vietnam and then develop their, expand their control through the special relationship that Vietnam asked for. So this was um, clearly the Viet Cambodian concern and on the part of the Vietnamese, they again had a long historical struggle with China. Chinese controlled Vietnam for 1,000 years, and for the next 1,000 or so years, Vietnamese had fought many times Chinese attempt to impose their rule on Vietnam. And so the Vietnamese saw Cambodia being the cat's paw of the Chinese using Cambodia to harass Vietnam on the south. That was the Vietnamese uh, uh, analysis of the situation. So the territorial disputes became the kind of flashpoint. But behind those were these long-term concerns about the destiny of the country, their ability to control the territory. De ces pays pour yes, thank you very much. That's very helpful. La juge, bien, je vous remercie. Ce Now, commentaire nous est très utile. Among your written bien, sources for the uh, écrites, uh, uh, writing of your book, Brother Enemy, de de did livre, you include the publication by the Democratic Compulsion Government, The Black Paper, published in September 1978. Yes, I did. The ERN number for that is uh, 4.9 English 00825100. Zero 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 two eight two six four two eight nine sorry six four four quatre quatre two zero zero two eight nine seven two 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 and the French zero 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 eight three one seven three to zero 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 eight three two eight four. How would you describe this publication by the Democratic Compuchian government published in September 1978? Um, it's a uh, a curious document uh, is a mixture of uh, facts and fantasy. A um, lot of things that the black paper says are historically inaccurate. But what is important, and I found it fascinating uh, the time reading, was that the insight it gave you into their thinking, not necessarily whether what that saying is true or not, as to why they are saying this and what is the implication of their saying it. And what struck me most was the openly racist position they took vis-à-vis the Vietnamese. And in my judgment, that anti-Vietnamese racism has been a major factor behind all the massacres, executions, killings, because the book Black Paper describes the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese nature as aggressor. So it is not the Vietnamese rulers, the Vietnamese party, it is the Vietnamese people. As a whole, they are aggressors. And that was the message that Black Paper gave. And from there it follows that people who have any sympathy for Vietnam or Vietnamese policies or who may be connected in some fashion with Vietnam 
tous les personnes qui ont un lien avec le Vietnam sont ipso facto des euh, ennemis du Kampuchea démocratique. Et il y a un racisme anti-vietnamien et on considère également au sens comme agresseur, ou considère comme agresseur toutes les personnes ayant des sympathies pour le Vietnam. C'était la conclusion khmer que j'ai pu observer à la lecture de ce livre, de cet ouvrage. La juge, je vous remercie. Uh, and before we um, take an adjournment and Avant give you and everyone else a break, um, you will have noted a disclaimer in the paper at uh, 0008254, which says this black paper is not the result of any research or a thesis, but a document gathering together all the actual facts and events during the successive struggles, uh, and that, of course, emphasizes your comments that it was partly factual and partly, uh, and I quote you, fantasy. Is that correct? Yes, I see. Et en well, I think, Mr. President, this may be a good opportunity to take oui, uh, an adjournment. Uh, uh, pause. The President, le président, the court will adjourn for 20 minutes until 11 a.m. when we will resume and continue our proceeding. Nous les débats. Court officer, can you Je facilitate the expert during the break emmener l'expert et vous occuper de l'expert pendant cette pause